we have news of the inflation figures for the month of uh, April. Year-on-year -year inflation rate for the month of April recorded an upward adjustment of 0.2% from the rate recorded in March to 9.5%. According to the Deputy Government Statistician, David Combat, the surge in the rate for non-food subsector contributed to the marginal increase in inflation. The non-food group recorded a year-on-year -year inflation rate of 10.4% in April compared to 9.7% recorded in March the same year. There's more in this report. Group recorded a year-on-year -year inflation rate of 10.4% in April compared to 9.7% recorded in March of the same year. According to the Deputy Government Statistician David Combat, five subgroups recorded year-on-year -year inflation rates higher than the group's average of 10.4%. Clothing and footwear recorded the highest inflation rate of 14.3%, followed by recreation and culture 14.1%, transport with 13.2%. The food inflation we see as a decline, okay? And for the non-food inflation, we see an increase. It depends on the, 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 the effects. One is negative, the other is positive. If the negative is large enough to cause the overall effect on the inflation, the overall inflation to go down, it will go down. If the negative is not strong enough to cause it to go down. It will move up. Are, are you with me? Yes, yeah, so that's what we are saying. At the regional level, the year-on-year -year rates ranged from 8% for the Upper East Region to 11.5% for the Upper West Region. The Upper West Region has recorded the highest combined and non-food inflation rates, while Ashanti recorded the highest food inflation rate in April 2019. As I mentioned some time ago, if we say that the Ashanti region has the highest food inflation rate, does not mean that Ashanti food prices are highest in Ashanti. It's just comparing the price of food products in Ashanti in April 2018 uh, to April 2019. So please, uh, in interpreting this, we have to be careful. So these are the rates with the Upper West recording the highest non-food inflation rate of 14.1% and combined inflation rate of 11.5% and Ashanti region recording you know, the lowest inflation rate for the food group. The consumer inflation is changing over time in the price of general goods and services that households acquire for consumption. Ebenezer Sabutes reports for Joy Business. And we have been getting some analysis from economists with Data Bank Courage Mate on the possibility of meeting the end of year inflation target of 8%. Uh, he says that the emerging trends make it unlikely. He was speaking earlier on the marketplace with Emmanuel Awajiriafe. Current trends, uh, the volatile trends of inflation that have been recorded in recent times, are we heading or are we, um, shall we be able to hit the target for inflation at the end of the year, 8%? Um, so, I, I think it, it, it's going to be very difficult for us to hit that 8.0% target by end of year. Um, and I say this because you look at how we started the year with a sharp deterioration in the exchange rate, where at, at, at the peak of the depreciation, we saw about 13 or 14% depreciation year to mid-March this year at the Forex Bureau. And that is one of the price build up on pricing expense for businesses on the market. And, and so when you import and you have to exchange the city for the dollar at that rate, you will pass it on. And the effect is still within the system. And although it is dying out steadily, it's still firmly within the system. Of course, there are downside pressures that will come from the port uh, or import duty reduction that was uh, implemented in early April. But I must say that overall, the, the inflation the inflationary pressures have elevated, the expectations are also elevated. Then on top of that, I think that the expansionary budget or the budget implementation for 2019 has also got to watch it because the more you, you expand aggressively, you, you risk elevating aggregate demand and that will put more pressure on the system. So if you look at the fact that I think overall policy has become more bullish than conservative. And that would be one key reason why if it doesn't become tighter, we might fail to hit the 8.0% mark. Albeit, there's still some decline in inflation to be expected. All right.
some analysis there from Carriage Mart of Data Bank. From next year, you may not need to access healthcare using your NHIS card or even buy forms for your passport application. Your Ghana card could be used to access all of these services. This is according to the Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya, who was speaking at a digital roadmap conference held here in Accra. The Vice President says integration of the database is crucial to Ghana's efforts at digitization. You need one piece of information that can link all the databases, and that really is going to be your national ID card. Um, so you would see after next year, NHIS will no longer issue an NHIS card because your, the data will be available on your national ID card. We don't expect you to, after having a national ID card, to go and apply for a passport anymore with the long forms and everything. Just the ID number will be sufficient for them to print. Right now we are integrating, for example, the National Insurance Commission database on insurance with the DVLA, for example, so that a policeman can look at your license plate and know whether this guy is insured or not, and they don't have to, to go. So the issue of integration and centralization of the databases, your the court, uh, you know, police, past GRA, all of that, I think is going to be very key. Um, in, otherwise, if we don't do that, then we've really not gone gone far. But I think that is the whole idea, that we, we've got to integrate all this database, centralize them, so that we get the efficiency out of their use. Meanwhile, there are some peculiar challenges associated with a shift towards an automated system. Cybersecurity expert at Eng Seng Yang, Samresh Ramjith, says uh, there should be a conscious effort to educate the public on emerging threats in the cyber financial space. There's still quite a lot of um, cyber techs that are financially motivated. So, you know, as we move to more digital transactions and cashless services, we're going to start seeing attackers move from trying to rob people at ATMs and banks. They're going to start going after your wallets and your e-wallets and start, you know, working with the, uh, people on the telco side of things and SIM swaps and those things become much more, more prevalent and more common. Um, and, and, and that's really not the case. So there's, there's quite a lot of education, I'd say, that needs to happen at a citizen level around letting people know what the risks, what some of the risks are and some of the challenges are around sharing information, especially about children and minors online. If you look at it from an EY perspective, why we're uh, so passionate about this is, is that if you look at the way that technology is impacting the, the economy, the global economy, the accounting practice, the world of finance, the way that people work and live, it's what we're seeing you know, in Ghana and, and across the citizenship as the panels and moderators have discussed today. You know, it's transforming the way people work, it's transforming education, it's transforming the way that we think about how we consume services, how we uh, consume applications and, and data. In other news tonight, Chief Manager Banking Supervision at the, uh, the Bank of Ghana, Ismail Adam, has charged financial institutions in the country to design products that suit the needs of their customers. According to him, these products should be aimed at enabling small and medium scale enterprises make acquisitions easily. He was speaking at the 2019 SME Summit organized by Sinapia Bank Savings and Loans here in Accra. Join us, Philip Anker was there and filed this report. The summit was organized on the theme, what works and what doesn't, in supporting enterprise growth products together. The event brought together various stakeholders in the financial sector to deliberate on how to make the SME sector a viable one. Chief Manager, Banking Supervision Department at the Bank of Ghana, Ismail Adam, believes these tailor-made products are key to boosting the needed growth. For the financial institutions, what they need to do is to understand the business environment of, of SMEs and, and try to design products that, that to suit their environment. If somebody's in SME, obviously you know that the documentations will not be that right. He wouldn't have security, as in collateral security. And so if somebody in that space want to have access to finance and you want to go by the standards of bigger institutions as in asking them to 
come with three audited financial statements, come with a recognized collateral security. Obviously, you know that that is going to be difficult. So just understand their environment, understand their needs, and design products that will suit their needs. And that is, that is a responsibility on financial institutions. As Chief Executive Officer of Sinapia Bus Savings and Loans, Tony Fosu, is however concerned about bad corporate governance of local businesses. Yes, we've learned um, how it is um, done in other parts of um, the regions, East Africa, um, Latin America and other places. Many of these um, uh, regions, we've had very successful SMEs, SMEs that have grown and um, survived first, second, third generations. Uh, one of the challenges that we find in our part of the world is that even successful SMEs do not really um, transcend or go beyond first generation. They do not go beyond the second generation when they are even successful. How do we do that? How do we make sure that we are building institutions that last? Um, we, talked about, we talked about good corporate governance in the SME industry. Governance structures and systems in the SME industry is very different from what is, is uh, persist in the corporate world. If our corporate world in Ghana is faced or fraught with a lot of challenges in corporate governance, what do we expect um, to see in SMEs? And that is what we have discussed. One of the main things that we have discussed is building blocks that, is, that are needed for us to establish, drive and grow our SMEs in Ghana. Senior Programs Manager at Opportunity International UK, Lydia Bafo Ewa, called on investors and resource persons not to freely hand out services to SMEs. Most often things that people get for free, they don't really cherish it. So even if they have to contribute, however little or small it is, it really helps them to really commit to it. So that's one of the, the take home. So more things that are free, that will not necessarily be the best way to, to go about it if we want to help the SME market. When we talk about the payment, it can be in different forms. So it could be actually contributing something to it or anything that they have to give to also contribute to show that they are really committed to what they are learning. The summit was part of activities to mark the 25th anniversary of the savings and loans company in partnership with Agidios and Opportunity International, Philip Ancres report for Joy News. Time to bring you the Joy Business Van. It's a Wednesday and while queuing at bus terminals to purchase a ticket for a road trip can be quite an experience, but three friends are hoping to simplify the process. They have developed an app that enables users to purchase their tickets online. They call the app Apotro. How does it work? Well, the Joy Business Van goes to Takwadi today in search of the co-founders of the tech startup Dynamax Technology Company. Apotro is their can name for a frog, the amphibian known to leap and jump. And that perhaps was what co-founders of Dynamax Technology Company Limited were thinking when they developed the app they call Apotro. Their aim to make it easier for commuters to go wherever they want to without experiencing the typical hassle at the bus terminal. We tried um, logging into the, the website, but it's like it's, um, it's blank. I don't know why. I don't know if it's the network or something. I don't know why. It's blank. So can you check it for us? Dennis Ofer Clinton, a marketing student at the University College of Management Studies, and Stephen Kweku Hasford, a marine engineer, are having a conversation with your partner, Ebenezer Bonnie Asher, a programmer, they are strategizing on the next line of action for Apotro, which is on trial. Apotro is a brainchild of Dennis. There are a lot of ideas, you know. You know, our system is such that we do things the old way, the normal way. So we want to bring technology. That's why Dynamax Technology is here. We are going to change the whole system with our innovative ideas and with technology. That's what we're going to do. We want to also empower. In the nearest future, we will build a tech hub and then engineer, nurture people with yeah. innovative um, ideas and also people who are good with computer skills yeah. and then finish, okay, so that they can also develop whatever it is. And that was when Ebenezer was brought in.
The main means of traveling here in Ghana is by road. Buses are the most popular for moving from one place to the other. However, the country lacks an efficient and effective busing system. It can't be a chaotic scene at bus terminals, as commuters sometimes have to struggle to secure places in a bus. After we have thought about a patrol, we, we knew that we would need a business to push a patrol. You can't just sell a patrol as a product without a business behind it. So we thought about um, establishing uh, a company, a limited liability company, and we named it Dynamas Technology Limited. And what Dynamas Technology seeks to do is to enable a new wave of entrepreneurial creativity. Okay, so that is how we have thought about it. And we, we realize that the transport industry is a big industry. So just like you can book and purchase an airline ticket ahead of time, the app would allow you book and purchase your bus tickets from home or anywhere else with internet access. So how does it work? After you have chosen the trip, then you proceed to where you will select your seat. So there is a 3D display of seat orientation. Okay, so you pick from a seat number that you prefer and you can select up to two maximum seats. Okay, so you proceed to the next stage and that is you, you can also select from a drop down um, a pickup location. Okay. So let's say if you want to pick a bus from or meet the bus, bus at Piper no, or anywhere that you think it will be convenient for you. And the bus pickup route. location has been designated on the application which one of them you can select from. You proceed to pay with mobile. Users who stay far from the bus terminals could choose from the various waiting bus stops provided by a patrol in order to board the bus at their convenience. This also cuts down on time wasted for moving from home to the station. After a successful pilot, the three startups are now left with the task of commercializing their product. They're currently in talks with some of the top bus transport companies, including VIP and STC. Um, these are people who have who do things the normal way and they've done it for a long time. So changing it or running on to change is now a problem. But we are still talking to so, them. What was the positive um, side for them if they... The positive side, I mean, it's, there's no stress for them because they get to plan their buses when to leave and all that. They are not going to see a chaotic, they are going to see any chaotic scene at the bus terminals because there's not going to be any queue there because everything is going to be done on the app. It would also cut down costs for these transport companies, they tell me, since they wouldn't have to print so many tickets. And while how does Dynamax profit? They get a bit of commission for the tickets purchased. The young entrepreneurs have invested so much into developing the app and are hopeful of making headway with transport firms. For them, Apotro is just the first leap. They have bigger plans. There are a lot of ideas, you know. You know, our system is such that we do things the old way, the normal way. So we want to bring technology. That's why Dynamax Technology is here. We are going to change the whole system with our innovative ideas and with technology. That's what we're going to do. We want to also empower in the nearest future, we will build a tech hub and then engineer, nurture people with yeah. innovative um, ideas and also people who are good with computer skills yeah. and then finish, okay, so that they can also develop whatever it is. But for now, these geniuses behind Apotro will take a leap at a time. Watching business live, uh, let's talk about the Joy Sports Invitation. Our logistics company, Southwood Adventures, are yearning to, uh, for a super comeback after missing out on last year, last year's edition. The Tema based company um, has four trophies uh, in its cabinet and can't wait for May 25 to add to the collection. You hear from the Chief Operating Officer, Casey Coleman.
Three, teamwork, excellence, and then accountability. So that's what you see here. You know, so we work as a team. We, we work together. We support each other. The vim is high. We hold ourselves to account. And that's what you see on the 25th. You see it live. We, we, we are the Liverpool of the competition. So the, so the people who are coming to, to compete with us, they are just pretenders. Yeah. We are the Liverpool. <laughs> we have we have the money, we have the appeal to they are going to win all the truth. Alright, so May 25, that's when the Joy Sports invitation will take place. That'll be for business live. Thanks for watching. My name is Daryl Powell. We'll be back same time tomorrow.